Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be part 3 of Rise of Remnants Dark Slayer. All credit to the author, their information can be found in the description below, as well as a link to the story if you would like to read along. This will be chapter 5 to 6. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and comment to help with the algorithm. It's much appreciated. Now, let's get into the story. Naruto and Ruby had soon arrived at the latter's workshop, where they began working on Crescent Rose. They started by taking the scythe apart to see which parts could be salvaged, repaired, or replaced. This is certainly a very complex weapon you've created, Naruto stated while examining all the parts that made up Crescent Rose. He had grown accustomed to the simpler weapons used in the Branwen tribe, rather than the more complex, transforming weapons huntsmen used. Even after meeting Emerald and seeing Thief's Respite, Naruto still found Crescent Rose much more complex in its workings and components. Yeah, I guess I did kind of go overboard in designing her, replied Ruby, somewhat disheartened at the state her weapon was in and realizing everything that would need replacement. But, uh, I admit, not all of the parts one used are legal, Ruby added sheepishly, surprising Naruto, who looked at her in disbelief upon hearing she used illegal parts to build Crescent Rose. You actually used illegal parts to make this? Where would you have even been able to find those? Questioned Naruto, only for Ruby to quickly shake her head and wave her arms around. It's not like that, I swear. They weren't illegal when I first got them, but after some people got, uh, mutilated from using them, they were made illegal. And I just never really got around to replacing them with their legal counterparts, said Ruby quickly, not wanting him to think she stole the parts or something like that, before realizing Naruto likely wouldn't care. Ah, that makes more sense, Naruto said since despite having just met her, he doubted Ruby seemed like the type to do anything illegal. Yeah, and I guess this can be a blessing in disguise, since I can order the legal parts now to replace them. Along with getting the parts to include a sword mode in Crescent Rose 2, Ruby said, pulling out her scroll to order the parts, while the whiskered blonde looked at her with interest. Sword mode? Was that something you were eventually going to implement? Naruto asked, intrigued by her idea of adding a sword mode to see how well she'd use it compared to her scythe. It was something I originally thought about adding, but changed my mind to instead have it be a rifle. But, I figured it'd be better to get rid of the gun mode after what happened, replied Ruby, making Naruto frown at the idea of her changing her weapon like that. You don't have to get rid of Crescent Rose's gun mode if it's a function you want to keep, said Naruto, not wanting her to change her weapon simply because he didn't like one of its forms. Ruby looked at him in surprise and confusion. But you don't like guns. Wouldn't you want me to get rid of it? Ruby asked, having thought Naruto would prefer if Crescent Rose didn't have its gun mode anymore. It's not my weapon, so it doesn't matter what I'd want from it. What matters is what you want. While yes, I don't like guns, Crescent Rose is your weapon, so you'll be the only one who gets to decide what it'll be and what forms it'll have. If you want it to still have the gun mode, then keep it, just don't use it when we're sparring, especially if I'm in a bad mood, Naruto replied, knowing it wasn't his place to tell people what kind of weapons they should use. Given that he let Emerald keep Thief's Respite's gun function, and once she finished her training with him, it'd be her choice whether to use it or not. So, he wouldn't have Ruby change her weapon simply because he didn't like it. Yeah, I will, said Ruby while smiling happily at her brother before placing an order for the gun mode parts as well, happy she could keep Crescent Rose the same and make it even better. I'm really glad Signal Academy covers this, Ruby thought, since Signal Academy helped cover the fun students needed for weapons parts and repairs. The two then continued working on Crescent Rose, occasionally glancing at each other before looking back at the parts, each of them trying to think of something to say. So, you didn't try replacing the parts before? Despite knowing they were illegal and people were mutilated from using them? Naruto asked, making Ruby blush slightly in embarrassment. No, I didn't. I just didn't want to since they worked really well, replied Ruby, not really having an excuse for why she didn't replace the parts sooner while Naruto glanced around a little before looking at his sister. Were you planning to mutilate someone with Crescent Rose? Questioned Naruto, causing Ruby to pale and turn green at the question. No. No, I wasn't planning to mutilate anyone. I just didn't really see a reason to replace them if they worked on Grimm. Ruby said quickly, getting a nod from the swordsman as they fell back into silence. What made you decide to use a sword? Ruby asked, wanting to change the subject again. Aside from my mother using a sword, making it easier and quicker for me to learn to use one. It was also more useful and effective than a transforming weapon, replied Naruto, having always found transforming weapons too complicated and with too high a chance of something going wrong. How was it more useful and effective? Ruby asked warily, 
not sure if she wanted to know. It allowed for quicker kills, especially with the styles I know being focused on fast movements and killing targets before they can react, Naruto said, making Ruby pale slightly and gulp. Right. Uh, what do you think so far of everyone, me, Yong, Dad, and Uncle Crow? Questioned Ruby, wanting to change the subject again. It's been interesting so far, though I don't agree with their plans to not tell you or Yong about Salem. Since I find it rather foolish, given your silver eyes and their ties to Ashbin alone put targets on your backs, Naruto replied, with Ruby nodding slowly, still shocked at everything she and Yang were told. But, I can't deny that I'd also hope to eventually one day meet you all, to learn more about you than what my mother told me. I even hope to meet Summer. She sounded like an amazing person, added Naruto, causing the silver-eyed girl to look down solemnly at the mention of her mother. Yeah, she really was. I don't have a lot of memories of her, with how young I was when she left. Yang remembers her better than I do. But what I do remember, she was the greatest mom anyone could ask for. And I wanted to be just like her, Ruby said sadly, wishing her mother could be here now to see her become a huntress. I'm sure she'd be proud of both you and Yang, with how far you've both come, Naruto said, making Ruby smile and nod in thanks. Also, one thing I won't deny, was that I fully expected that should I ever get the chance to meet any of you, it'd be on opposite sides, and I'd be forced to kill you. Since I doubt any of you would have been able to bring yourselves to kill me, and I wouldn't let myself be captured, added Naruto, causing Ruby to lose her smile and sweat drop while laughing nervously, but just equated it to him being raised by bandits rather than actually being malicious. Though it did make her glad that he left the Branwen tribe, and came to meet them himself, with Yang and Emerald. Meanwhile, Yang and Emerald were walking through Vale making small talk. So him, what exactly do you do besides hang around my brother? Questioned Yang, wanting to know more about her twin's friend slash student to see if it'll help her learn more about Naruto as well. Usually just training or doing anything that interests me at the time. But I do have one thing I enjoy, Emerald said with a smirk before looking around until she spotted someone. Just wait here and watch, said Emerald to Yang, confusing the blonde girl but nodded in response as Emerald went to approach the person she saw. Yang watched as Emerald seemed to put on a show of, accidentally, bumping into the person, knocking them both down, before she then hastily began apologizing and helping them, handing them stuff that they dropped before going on her way. Though what Yang noticed, and the person didn't, was how Emerald had snatched their wallet during the whole thing. The greenette smirked back at the blonde girl and motioned her to follow her again, Yang running up to Emerald with a small frown. You steal from people, Yang stated, already knowing she was a thief before Naruto met her, but thought she stopped afterwards. Yeah but now only from those that wouldn't miss a couple lean. Along with taking a chance to mess with the really rich assholes, like a certain Atlas CEO, Emerald replied, causing Yang's eyes to widen before she slowly smiled and started laughing. Wait, that was you who posted that video of Jokshni? said Yang, having seen the video and found it hilarious that someone could mess with the SDC CEO like that. Yep, I couldn't pass up a chance to screw around with him when it was such a golden opportunity. Even better with all the lean I got off of him which I suppose I could share with my new friend. If you don't mind me getting some discounts on stuff I really like, said Emerald with a smirk while pulling out several lean cards and waving them in front of Yang, who looked at them temptingly since she had been wanting to do some shopping. Well, as long as you still pay something for what you get, Yang said, taking the cards, willing to bend the rules a little since Emerald wasn't doing anything really malicious. Great, and I did see a nice-looking club earlier when we first arrived that I wanted to check out, Emerald said with a grin which Yang matched at hearing the mention of a club. Now you're speaking my language, let's go, said Yang, eager to get some shopping done and then get into a club. Later, I can't believe we just did that. Yang laughed as she and Emerald ran out of the club, the latter's semblance making it so they were ignored by anyone nearby. I can. My only regret is that we had to leave before the show ended, said Emerald, also laughing at what they just did, wishing she'd recorded everything they just did. The reason for their amusement being that after the two had gone shopping where they got new outfits, ammo for their weapons, dust, as well as several items they could use to mess with people, all of which they got with large discounts for, thanks to Emerald's semblance, with Yang at least wanting to pay for some of the items, though had been willing to look the other way for things she really wanted, while Emerald had also taken some stuff that had also caught her eye. They had then gone to the club the Greenette mentioned, with her semblance helping them get in, with them having enjoyed themselves for a while even having a few drinks, before Yang suggested causing some chaos, leading to them using some of the stuff they bought, putting glue and thumbtacks on several seats, laxatives in everyone's drinks, and finally throwing hundreds of marbles roll on the floor. 
along with setting up several firecrackers all over the club, finishing it by breaking into the back and putting chili powder and itching powder into the sprinkler system. The two girls had simply watched as the mayhem unfolded, much to their amusement, even more so once the firecrackers began going off, while Emerald took it a little further. Having broken into the club's safe to steal all the lean they had, along with taking some of the more high-class drinks they had stored in the back, leading to the two then making a break for it before anyone could notice nothing happening to them, but not before setting the sprinkles off as they did so. If my dad ever found out I did that, he'd ground me for life. Yang said after they stopped running, once they were far enough away from the club. And are you gonna tell him? Emerald asked with a smirk, already knowing the answer as Yang shook her head. Hell no. That was the most fun I've had in a long time. There's no way I'd pass up doing it again, replied Yang, not thinking she'd have that much fun breaking the rules and messing with people. Then stick with me and you'll see just how good it feels to be bad, stated Emerald, eager for the chance to show Yang more of the fun they could have by breaking a few rules. I'm sure you will, as long as you see that there's fun in bending rules too, Yang said, with a green at nodding, knowing that could be just as much fun. The two then proceeded to head to the docks to catch a ferry back to Patch, after seeing it was starting to get late. Only for Emerald to notice that Young soon gained a thoughtful and downcast expression, rather than still looking happy and satisfied with their trip. You're thinking about Naruto, aren't you? Emerald stated, figuring that Young would still be thinking about her brother, given how their reunion went, and then everything that was revealed to her and Ruby. Yeah, it was, it definitely wasn't the reunion I was hoping for. When I first learned I had a twin brother, I was shocked and sad at never getting the chance to meet him, but then I was happy that I had another sibling when I would hopefully be able to meet one day. I even had this picture in my head of what it would be like when we did finally reunite, and what Naruto would be like. Then when we finally do meet, he knocks me down without even trying, replied Yang, having wanted to meet Naruto ever since she learned about him and imagined how their reunion would play out. Only for that to come crashing down at the reality of what her brother was like, and how he seemed to already have a low opinion of her simply from how she fought and her weapons. Yeah. I've only known him for a few weeks and I've already learned he has a way of messing with people's expectations of him. When I first met him, I thought I was dead, but instead he took me in and is now training me, then reveals more of his past and all that other stuff. Not to mention his personality definitely isn't what you'd expect, said Emerald, knowing that Naruto was certainly different than how one would imagine he'd be, with the blonde nodding in agreement. Tell me about it. It doesn't help that it seems Ruby's getting along with him better and is already becoming his favorite sister even with what happened to Crescent Rose. And it seems like Naruto doesn't even care about spending time with me, Yang said, feeling hurt that it seemed like her brother didn't want to spend time with her. Don't take it personally. Despite how he acts and sees himself, Naruto's not as cold and uncaring as he likes to portray himself. If he was, I doubt he would have let me live, let alone help me, after I tried stealing from him. Nor would he have felt guilty over breaking Crescent Rose and offered to help Ruby fix her. If anything, I think that deep down, Naruto is a kind person and does want to help people, but his upbringing and having to act that way to a bunch of people he doesn't like, except your mother and his late girlfriend, for so long. He probably isn't even aware of it himself and just doesn't know how else to act. But now he's free of that life and doesn't have to act that way so much anymore. It could give him time to figure things out for himself. Just give it time and I'm sure he'll want to start spending time with you, assured Emerald, making Young smile at her and thanks. Thanks, and you're right. I just need to give it time since we did just, officially, meet each other. Besides, knowing Ruby, she'll likely get back at Naruto for breaking Crescent Rose. Probably by holding it over his head and wrapping him around her fingers. So that'll definitely be a sight to see, said Yang. Knowing for how sweet and innocent her little sister can be, when it comes to her weapon, she can become incredibly vindictive to anyone who damages it in any way. I think she's already making a good head start on that. Give it time and she'll have her own personal butler, Emerald stated jokingly, getting a laugh out of Yang as she just imagined Ruby ordering Naruto around like that and him folding at the mention of Crescent Rose. After reaching the docks and catching a ferry to Patch, the duo returned to the Shao Long Rose cabin, being met with Taeyong and Crow already being back. You girls arrived just in time. I was just getting started on dinner, Taeyong said, looking out from the kitchen to see Yang and Emerald walk in before they all look to see Naruto and Ruby come out of the latter's workshop as well. If you're making dinner, I can help, offered Naruto, surprising everyone at hearing he can cook. You can cook? questioned Crow, looking at his nephew with a raised brow. Given that I was part of a now-destroyed nomadic bandit tribe and was being groomed as its eventual leader, 
It's kind of warranted that I knew how, Naruto replied, as aside from training him to fight, his mother did also make sure he was capable of taking care of himself if he was ever on his own. Huh, that does explain more, thought Emerald, not as surprised as the others, given how they hunted and foraged for food when they were camping. Then sure, it never hurts to have an extra pair of hands, Taeyang said, smiling at Naruto, who nodded and went into the kitchen to help prepare. Later, it wasn't long before dinner was ready and everyone sat down to eat, being surprised at how good the food tasted, amazed at how good of a cook Naruto was. This is really great, Naruto. I can't wait to see how good the cookies you can make are, Ruby said, smiling eager at the idea of having homemade cookies. Well, you'll have to wait since it's been a long day. I can make them tomorrow, replied Naruto, wanting to simply rest and focus his mind after everything that's happened, only to see Ruby deflate and look like he kicked her puppy. Oh, I see. I was just really hoping for cookies today, since they always cheer me up, and all the work that Crescent Rose still needs done. I was just hoping to have something nice done, but okay it can wait, said Ruby while developing some tears in her eyes, making Naruto mentally groan. Fine. I'll make your cookies after we're done eating, Naruto said, relenting to her desire, with the ravenette's expression immediately turning into a large grin while her tears vanished. Yeah, cookies. Ruby cheered, much to everyone's amusement at seeing how easily she got him to change his mind. Okay, yeah, this is way better, Young thought, knowing she'll be getting so much blackmail material with this. Evernight Castle. Meanwhile, within Evernight Castle, Salem looked down at Vermilion Radock who was bowing before her. Vermilion is a tall, dark-skinned man with long, spiky, red hair. His attire consists of black boots with red soles and red straps at the top, maroon pants with dark red pockets and knee pads adorned with black diamonds, a black shirt with tearing along the collar, a red leather jacket, red fingerless gloves, and a dark gray pig mask with a scar through the right eye over his face. What is your bidding, your grace? questioned Vermilion, wondering why Salem had summoned him here knowing it must be important for her to call him personally. I have need of your unique talents, Vermilion. I have placed a hit on two individuals, Naruto Uzumaki and Emerald Susterai, as they have recently put a very large dent in my plans. And due to your semblance share, you will be ideal to find and kill them, replied Salem, with the man giving another bow and a nod. I'll see it done, Vermilion said before taking his leave to start the hunt for locating his targets and bringing their heads back to Salem. Once Vermilion had left, Salem stood up before moving towards another part of her castle, soon arriving at a large lab where she found the still-alive Dr. Merlot. However, he now sported new grim limbs grafted onto his body, as well as new eyes, replacing all the parts Naruto destroyed and cut off. Salem had found Merlot clinging to life in his former base and saved him, knowing that his research would prove useful in her goals, along with making her grim even stronger and deadlier. Though Salem was annoyed with how Merlot didn't look up from his work to acknowledge her presence, something she expected from all her subordinates. What do you want, Salem? Merlot said after a few moments, increasing the Dark Queen's annoyance further. Don't forget your place, Merlot. I only saved you because your research would prove useful to me and my plans. I would suggest not testing to see how far your usefulness will get you, Salem threatened, with Merlot turning around to face her with a smirk on his face. Of course not, my lady. I just don't do well with interruptions while I'm in the middle of my research. And you have my utmost gratitude for bringing me into your inner circle, allowing me to take my research further than I could have ever dreamed, replied Merlot, pleased that now he could further research the Grimm and what they can do, before he scowled at remembering the person responsible for this in the first place. Especially when I finally find that boy and make him pay. Merlot spat, swearing to get revenge on Naruto for destroying his original lab, along with all the grim he had inside it. Even his prized Deathstalker had been killed. I wouldn't concern yourself with him for much longer. I've just sent Vermilion after him, so he will likely be dead before the week is over, stated Salem, confident that Vermilion will accomplish his task, only to frown when Merlot looked unconvinced. Don't expect him to succeed. While Vermilion Radok may be a powerful combatant, the experiments I performed made it so that Naruto will ultimately come out victorious. If this had been done prior to my experiments, then Vermilion would have stood a better chance. But as he is now, he will merely serve as a stepping stone for Naruto to grow stronger and discover more of his abilities, said Merlot, making Salem's frown deepen at how sure he sounded that Vermilion would fail. You speak as if he's unstoppable. How can you be so sure he'll survive? Questioned Salem, with Merlot gaining a dark and deranged smirk on his face. 
Because when I experimented on Naruto, I did so with the intent to make him my ultimate creation and weapon, a being of unrivaled strength and power, who couldn't be stopped no matter what he was faced with, potential to surpass anyone that'd dare stand in his way, with the innate desire to keep pushing himself to greater power, as well as the raw, unbridled fury and rage to never stop, to never quit, to never surrender until he's achieved his goals, along with destroying anything and anyone foolish enough to stand in his way. He was created to stand at the top, Merlot said, with Salem looking at him neutrally, but she did possess a spark of worry in her eyes. What did you try to create? Salem said, wondering just what kind of creature Merlot had made, with the doctor chuckling madly. As the entire time he had experimented on Naruto, he had only a single thought in his mind, one idea of what he was intending to create wishing to make a being unlike anything the world had seen before, and one that no one could hope to stop. Something that could only exist in a person's darkest and most twisted nightmares, and now he's made such a being a reality. A month has passed since Naruto and Emerald started staying at the Shao Long slash Rose cabin, with Naruto having spent most of his time helping Ruby fix Crescent Rose. With the new parts having arrived, allowing them to start repairing the scythe as well as adding in the sword mode. The half-siblings now look over the completed and repaired Crescent Rose Mark II, with Ruby smiling brightly and excitedly as she picked up her weapon. It looks so amazing. Ruby squealed as she changed it into the new sword form, with it resembling its standard gun form, but with the straightened scythe blade being revealed alongside the underbarrel of the gun and the butt of the gun having folded into a hilt, allowing Ruby to still wield it like a sword, but also fire the gun part as well either at Grimm or to propel herself through the air like in its scythe mode. I admit, it does look even more effective. It will also provide greater versatility in fighting at close range, in addition to long range and medium range. Once you master using it as a sword, I'm sure you'll be a dangerous opponent to face, stated Naruto, knowing Crescent Rose is even more dangerous than before with its versatility, especially against those who'd know how to use such a weapon. I know, it's so exciting. I'll be able to take down so many Grimm with my new and improved baby said Ruby before she gained a downcast expression. But, I was also really hoping to have dust infused into the blade, like your swords. But I was just so focused on repairing it after it was damaged, that I forgot. Now I don't know if I'll still be able to, or if I have enough money, Ruby said while glancing at Naruto quickly before looking sadly at her weapon, not ashamed to blackmail her brother to make Crescent Rose even better. Only for the silver-eyed girl to yelp when Naruto lightly bonked her on the head, while giving her a dry look. Don't think you can keep blackmailing me. Yes, I knew exactly what you were doing. I just allowed it because I owed you for breaking Crescent Rose. But I'm not going to let you take advantage of it and make me spoil you, Naruto said, having known Ruby had been guilt-tripping him the entire time, but allowed it as he felt he owed her for breaking Crescent Rose. Now that it's been repaired, he wasn't going to let her get away with it anymore, making the Ravenette pout that she couldn't get him to do more stuff for her. Fine, no more guilt-tripping and blackmailing, muttered Ruby but mentally added there were other ways she can get back at Naruto too. I wonder if Yang and Emerald would be able to help me with some pranks? Ruby wondered, knowing they've been getting into their own trouble whenever they went out into Vale. Though I'll admit it's been nice helping you work on Crescent Rose, Ruby. You can be very passionate about something you like doing, and seeing you work on your weapon has been interesting. It's also been nice getting to know you as well, said Naruto while smiling at his half-sister, making Ruby blush lightly before returning the smile. It's been really great getting to know you too, Naruto. And thanks for your help in fixing Crescent Rose and all the other stuff despite knowing what I was doing, Ruby replied, while mentally deciding to take it easy on Naruto with her payback. Don't worry about it, besides, it'll just make it more fun when I beat you in our sparring match, Naruto stated with a smirk, since the Ravenette wanted to test out Crescent Rose's sword form against him. Never mind, he will suffer the consequences, thought Ruby, now swearing to make him suffer her wrath. Say that again when I've beaten you, retorted Ruby as they exited her workshop, finding Yang and Emerald in the living room watching TV. Wow, you two are actually coming out of there. Quick, get a camera before they disappear inside again, Yang said in a sarcastic and urgent tone, given they'd been spending most of their time inside the workshop. Oh Yang, I think I see a hair out of place. Did you only spend 10 minutes working on your hair, rather than 30? Naruto asked just as sarcastically smirking when his twin actually tried checking to see if her hair was messed up. So, did you two finally finish your work? Emerald asked, with Ruby nodding and grinning proudly as she showed off Crescent Rose in its sword form. Yep, now I have a sword, a gun, and a scythe all at once. 
I will be unstoppable, declared Ruby before yelping when Naruto flicked her forehead, making her stumble back. Look at that, I think I just stopped you, Naruto stated, making Ruby narrow her eyes at him while rubbing her forehead. My vengeance shall be swift, Ruby said before rushing outside, while Naruto rolled his eyes before looking at Yang and Emerald. She wants to spar to get a feel for Crescent Rose's new sword mode and believes she'll win, said Naruto as he went outside, with Yang and Emerald trading a look before getting up and going outside as well to watch and make sure things don't get out of hand, like last time. Heading out onto the porch, Yang and Emerald saw Naruto and Ruby standing across from each other, with Ruby holding Crescent Rose in its sword form while Naruto had taken out Kansho and Bakuya. Not a moment later, Ruby charged towards Naruto, swinging her sword at him, which he blocked with Bakuya before swinging Kansho at the ravenette. With Ruby ducking under the slash then pulling the trigger, firing a shot off beside Naruto's head, disorienting him from the bang, along with also propelling herself away from him, before she sped around and attacked him from behind. With Naruto moving Kansho behind him, blocking her strike again before kicking his leg back, slamming it into her chest and knocking Ruby back. The silver-eyed girl then being put on the defensive as Naruto charged her bringing Bakuya down her, Ruby raising her sword up blocking the strike, then bending backward when he tried slashing at her midsection, speeding away to put some distance between them. Ruby then sped back towards Naruto and began running around him, trying to hit him, while the whiskered teen blocked all her strikes, his eyes darting around before he managed to drop down and sweep Ruby's legs out from under her. The sudden stop causing Ruby to go flying through the air, but she managed to catch herself by stabbing her sword into the ground. Flipping in the air, the ravenette landed on her feet, ducking down in time to dodge a slash from Bakuya, before she then pulled her sword out and thrust it forward to stab at Naruto, who blocked it with the flat side of Kansho as he then jumped back, with Ruby going right after him swing her sword at him, which he blocked with both his blades, leading Ruby to quickly flip over him, bringing her sword down to hit him across the back, Ruby was surprised when her half-brother suddenly spun around her, dodging her attack completely. Then before she could react, Naruto slammed the hilt of Kansho into her hand, making her yelp as she lost her grip on Crescent Rose, dropping her weapon before finding Kansho pointed at her neck while Bakuya was aimed at her heart. Oh man, Ruby muttered, having hoped to at least be able to hit him once, while Naruto stepped back and put his swords away. You did better than I expected. If you were using all of your weapon's forms it would have been a tougher challenge, but one I still would have won, said Naruto with a smirk, while Ruby stuck her tongue out at him while picking up Crescent Rose. Thanks, I think. And I may VE used Crescent Rose's gun form like a club a few times, it didn't seem that different, Ruby replied, only to yelp when Naruto flicked her on the forehead again. Don't ever think that. There's a difference between a sword and a club. One requires skills and precision to use, and the other is just a blunt object you swing around. If you're going to use a sword, then you'll have to learn how to actually use one, said Naruto, making the ravenette nod. Having seen how Crow uses Harbinger in its sword form, she knew she'd need time to learn how to use her own sword form. Before you do that, I was actually hoping if we'd be able to spend some time together? Young asked, hoping to get the chance to spend time with her brother before he started spending even more time with Ruby. You'd be welcome to join us during training, replied Naruto, making the blonde girl deflate slightly that he didn't get what she meant. I was actually hoping to get some training done on my own, Emerald said, wanting to help Young spend some quality time with her brother. Plus, she did want to train on her own to impress Naruto with what she's learned herself. And I want to get used to using Crescent Rose as a sword first, before we start training, added Ruby, knowing she's basically been keeping Naruto to herself the entire time and knew Young wanted a chance to spend time with him as well. Naruto looked at the two with a raised brow before he looked at Young and saw the hopeful expression on her face realization soon dawning on him. The whiskered teen realizing the entire time he's been here, he's either helped Ruby with repairing Crescent Rose or training with Emerald, but he hasn't really spent any time with Yang. Not that he didn't want to. He just wasn't sure how, given their first meeting and how they didn't really seem to have much in common. Naruto didn't know how to go about approaching Yang to see if she wanted to spend time together. All right, I guess we can hold off training for a while. That means I also now have a lot of free time. If you had something in mind, Yang said Naruto, smiling at his twin, much to her joy at finally getting the chance to spend time with her brother. Yes, what time can I pick you up? Yang asked, confusing Naruto with her choice of words. Uh, an hour, I guess? Naruto said in confusion, with Yang smirking. Great, I'll see you in an hour for our date, bro, 
said Yang before going back inside while mentally laughing at the embarrassed and confused look on Naruto's face. While Emerald and Ruby couldn't help but feel annoyed and jealous for some reason at Yang calling her and Naruto spending time together a date. Despite knowing she was just doing it to mess with Naruto, they still felt jealous about it for some reason. With Naruto being confused and embarrassed at Yang calling it a date, before shaking his head, figuring she's just trying to mess with him. Though he was curious about what she had in mind for what they'll do together. Later, after an hour Yang kept her word and picked up Naruto for them to go out into Vale to spend some time together. So, uh, what did you do before coming to Patch? Like what did you do for fun, or like doing? Yang asked after trying to think of something to talk about, before settling on hobbies. I mostly just trained, learning different sword styles to improve myself, along with taking care of my old sword before I gained the Yamato. Sometimes, I'd also travel around to different cities to see what they were like. But aside from that, I never really found anything that interested me. What about you? What do you like to do during your free time? Naruto asked while looking at his sister curiously. Mostly training too, along with working on Ember Celica as well. I also work on my motorcycle Bumblebee, not to mention coming here to Vale to check out the clubs, sometimes causing some trouble if anyone starts annoying me, replied Yang with a smirk. Having gotten into a few fights before, not to mention whenever she and Emerald got into trouble. A motorcycle? Does it have weapons? Naruto asked, getting a raised brow from Yang. No, since I already have my gauntlets, said Yang. Not sure why she'd need to put weapons on her bike. While Naruto shrugged in response. It never hurts to have some variety. I have Yamato along with Kansho and Bakuya. Since it's good to be able to use different weapons so you don't become predictable. Plus, it'd certainly be shocking for anyone that sees a motorcycle turn into a weapon stated Naruto, making the blonde brawler laugh as she could just imagine the look on people's faces to see a motorcycle turn into a giant weapon. Well, putting it like that, I may consider turning Bumblebee into a weapon, if only to see the looks on people's faces, said Yang with a smile before looking at her brother. What's with your semblance anyway? I know it lets you teleport, but how does that work? Yang asked, confused as to how his semblance worked. My semblance allows for both long-range and short-range teleportation. The latter you've already seen I make use of in combat. The long range, though, is trickier, given the way it works. It either lets me open a portal to a location I've been to or align with my intent. For instance, if I wanted to be somewhere safe, a portal would open up in a safe location. I can also just have a specific destination in mind, even if I've never been there. Like when I opened a portal to patch for me, an emerald to arrive through, Naruto explained, making Young look at him in surprise at how much his semblance could do. Yeesh, and all my semblance does is make me stronger when I take damage, said Yang, seeing how different their semblances were. She had originally thought they'd be similar since they're twins. Yes, I've heard about what your semblance can do, letting you absorb kinetic energy from attacks then return it with greater power. It's certainly a useful semblance, but it's also a double-edged blade if you aren't careful, Naruto said, getting a look from his sister. What do you mean? I can end fights with a single punch after taking enough damage, and my aura protects me long enough to take opponents down, Yang stated, with the whiskered teen looking at her with a raised brow. And what happens when you encounter someone strong enough to shatter your aura, or someone with a weapon that can cut through it? Naruto asked, with Yang falling silent at that. One thing you should never forget, Yang, a semblance is just another tool, not a crutch to rely on. Take it away, and you'll simply fall down with no way back up. I'm not saying don't use it, but learn to fight smarter. Don't just rush into a fight. Watch your opponents, study them and their movements, wait for an opening, and then strike, explained Naruto. The blonde brawler rolled her eyes at his words. Yeah, yeah. You made that perfectly clear during our oh-so-loving reunion, Yang said sarcastically, still feeling slightly miffed. Like I said, you're welcome to join during training. My disappointment aside, you do have potential. You just need the drive to improve and grow stronger, Naruto replied. He had seen Yang's potential during their fight, which only added to his disappointment that she didn't seem to do more to improve herself. Well, I certainly have the drive to knock you down a little, just so I can show you who's the better fighter, said Yang with a smirk, while Naruto groaned and covered his face. Unfortunately, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do to help your sense of humor. You likely killed that long ago with your terrible puns, stated Naruto while Yang simply laughed before spotting a club down the street. Sweet. There's a club I've been to a few times. It's a great place to go to have some fun and get some information, Yang said, grabbing Naruto by the arm and pulling him towards the club. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. Clubs aren't exactly my thing, said Naruto, not really liking clubs, 
finding them too loud and crowded for his taste. Oh, don't be a baby. How can you know if you like it if you've never been to one? Besides, you did ask me what I had planned. Well, now I'm planning to help you learn to have some fun, the young way, stated Young, with Naruto rolling his eyes but allowing his twin to pull him along if only to satisfy her. Though unknown to the twins, they were being watched by Vermilion, along with an acquaintance of his, Abigail Pyre, whom he had hired to aid him in this mission. Abigail was a woman with shoulder-length red hair and dark eyes, wearing a dark red tank top and matching red shorts mostly covered with a black shoulder cape worn over her right arm. Her top and shorts had black trimming while her cape had red trimming. She also wore black fingerless opera-length gloves and black knee-high heeled boots with red lace. Her weapon was a sword-breaker scimitar, having openings on the back of the blade to catch swords between and break them. Her semblance was known as Ethereal Hand, making her great at pickpocketing people and managing to trip opponents up during a fight. I don't see why we're even wasting time waiting. They're just two brats. I don't even know why you'd ask for help in dealing with them, Abigail stated. Annoyed that they were going after two teenagers, even more so that they hadn't already dealt with them, only to fall silent when Vermilion growled lowly and slowly turned his head towards her. And you shouldn't say something foolish. If you think they're just two brats, then by all means go down there to kill them. See how long you'll be able to last. Salem wants the boy dead, meaning he's not to be underestimated, even more so with how she sent me to kill him, retorted Vermilion, turning back to Naruto and Young as they entered the club. So, we just have the others soften them up for us? questioned Abigail cautiously, since they also brought some other allies as well. No, I fully expect them all to end up dead. They're merely for us to see what they can do, then plan and prepare to kill the boy after seeing his abilities firsthand, Vermilion said, wanting to get a feel for Naruto's abilities first and then take him out. Later, after entering the club, Young mostly pulled Naruto along everywhere, trying to get him to loosen up and have fun, while the whiskered teen only felt annoyed at the loud music and people. But eventually, he started relaxing and started getting used to it, even starting to enjoy himself, which made Young smile. See? I told you. You just had to give it a try. Young said with a grin as she and Naruto went over to the bar, while Naruto had a small smile on his face. Okay, I'll admit this isn't terrible and can be rather fun, replied Naruto, admitting it was pretty fun. Of course it is. Anything I like is always fun. But what makes it even better is having a drink to go with the clubbing stated Yang before waving over the bartender, who just so happened to also be the owner, Heishiong or Junior as he's commonly known. Junior wore a black vest over a white dress shirt, a red tie, black gloves, and black dress pants. He had gray eyes, short black hair, along with a matching beard and mustache. Junior was also exceptionally tall, standing a full head over both Yang and Naruto. Aren't you kids a little young to be in a place like this? Junior asked with a raised brow, while Yang merely smirked. And aren't you a little old to be called Junior? Yang retorted, making the man roll his eyes. Fine, whatever, not my problem to question where kids like to go on their dates. But if you both start getting too touchy-feely, then take it somewhere else, said Junior, assuming they were a couple on a date. Much to their embarrassment and mortification, we're not on a date, and we're definitely not a couple, Naruto said, with Yang quickly nodding in agreement. Yeah, we're siblings, twins in fact, added Yang wanting to make it perfectly clear they were related and not a couple, while Junior looked unfazed at this information. Whatever. When you feel like ordering something, let me know, Junior said before walking away, leaving the embarrassed twins behind as they sat in silence. Well that was. Yang muttered, looking everywhere but at Naruto. Yeah, said Naruto, also avoiding looking at his sister. The two glanced at each other before quickly looking away, though they tensed when they heard a sudden crash while all the noise came to a stop. Turning to the source of the crash, their eyes widened when they saw Vermilion, Abigail, and Sixty Hannah Guild foot soldiers enter the club. The crash had come from the guard posted, just outside crashing through the doors by Vermilion. The masked criminal now carried his flail, holding the handle in one hand and the thirty-foot length of chain in the other. Looking around the club, Vermilion soon looked at Naruto and Yang. Everyone get out now, but not you too, said Vermilion, pointing at Naruto and Yang while the rest of the clubgoers didn't hesitate to run to the nearest exit. Hey, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but you, Junior said, angry at these guys for busting into his club, only to be silenced when Vermilion swung his flail, wrapping it around Junior's neck before with minimal effort swinging the man through the air and sending him crashing through a wall. Old friends of yours? Yang asked while activating her gauntlets, with Naruto pulling out Yamato. No. But, I'm guessing they were sent by Salem. 
I take it she's seeking retribution for her now dead maiden vessel, stated Naruto, with Vermillion simply giving a nod. It's nothing personal, but when Salem puts a hit on someone, they don't live very long to regret the mistake of crossing her, said Vermillion, making Naruto sigh, seeing he and Emerald now had a hit put on them. Very well, Naruto said as he grabbed Yamato's hilt, while Yang got into a stance with a smirk on her face, liking the chance to also get to fight with Naruto as well. Not a moment later, Vermillion motioned his men to attack, with them all charging towards the twins, only to be stopped when Naruto teleported right into the center of them. The whiskered teen drew Yamato and swung it through the air, slicing three thugs at their midsections, nearly cutting them in half, before he then bent back to avoid a strike from another thug, stabbing Yamato through a fourth thug's chest, with Naruto then flipping over him and another thug, kicking the second into the one he just stabbed, impaling him on his sword still inside the first thug, then just as quickly teleporting in front of them and grabbing Yamato's hilt, pulling it out of the two and slicing the throat of the thug that tried striking him. Meanwhile, thirty of the soldiers had continued charging at Yang, who jumped into the air into the center of the thugs and pulled her fist back. The blonde brawler slammed back into the ground, unleashing a fiery punch that released a shockwave through the dance floor, knocking them all back. Not stopping there, Yang charged at one, as they were all getting up, jumping into the air, and performing a somersault kick on her first opponent. She then turned around and uppercut a second one, following it up with a spinning kick that sent another two tumbling away. The rest of them then came charging at her, with Yang shooting at the first one in front of her and kicking behind her at another. Another thug swung at her from behind, but she swept his legs out from under him and punched him up into the air, only to grab him and slam him into the ground. She then took a couple of steps toward an oncoming thug to jump up, kicking him in the face and launching herself off of him, allowing her to deliver a flying punch to another thug. This was quickly followed by her rushing forward as she defeated yet another nearby opponent with a punch to the stomach followed by an uppercut launching them into the air. Ah, that's ten down for me already. Wait, make it eleven? Yang said with a smirk, while ducking under a strike from an eleventh thug and delivering a fiery punch to his chest, sending him crashing through a glass pillar. Are you really doing this right now? questioned Naruto, blocking a strike with his sheath followed by cutting the thug's head and kicking it towards another rushing them slashing them diagonally across the chest. Of course, this is turning out even better than I hoped. We gotta hang out, go to a club, now we get to kick ass. This is the best bonding time ever, said Yang grinning, while trying to hide her queasiness that Naruto was actually killing his opponents. Well, if that's the case, Naruto said, teleporting into the center of five thugs, driving Yamato through the first one's chest before jumping up into the air, pulling out Bakuya and Kansho, the swordsmen combined them together into their bow form and pulled out three arrows, knocking them before releasing them. Each one found itself buried in a thug's head, with Naruto landing on the ground before rushing the last thug, slashing them both across the chest, before dismissing his twin blades and recovering Yamato, vanishing in a burst of speed past two thugs and slowly sheathing his sword, with blood exploding from the thugs once Yamato clicked and was fully sheathed. I believe that puts me at fifteen. I'm up by four said Naruto, looking at his twin, with Yang smirking at this, before she noticed several more assailants rushing her from behind and fired a shot, using the recoil to send her flying towards yet another group of enemies. She elbowed the first thug and kicked him away while another attempted to swing at her, but was promptly blocked and shot in the face. Yang then swung around under his arm and punched him once more. This was followed by another spin as she kicked, punched, and kicked him again with the final hit sending him flying backward through a glass pillar. Yang then fired a shot that sent her propelling toward three more thugs, smashing her fist into the one standing between the other two, sending him crashing into a wall, followed by turning to the one on her left and punching, doing the same with the one on her right. The huntress in training punched both of the thugs multiple times until finally she grabbed them both and slammed their heads together, taking them out. That's now sixteen for me, putting me back in the lead, Yang said, her smirk growing. Naruto rolled his eyes but couldn't help but smirk slightly, seeing they had already taken out most of the assailants. Suddenly, Naruto grunted in pain as Vermillion's flail struck him from behind, the chain wrapping around his chest. He felt himself being pulled towards the criminal, who grabbed him by the neck. Naruto gritted his teeth as he felt a sudden tugging sensation at his aura. The chain ignited with fire, burning through his clothes and body. Vermillion then sent Naruto crashing into the bar, triggering a mini-explosion as the alcohol caught fire. Naruto. 
Yang shouted in shock and horror at seeing him engulfed in flames. Before she could rush to save him, Vermilion appeared in front of her. Wrapping his flail's chain around her neck, he launched her into the ceiling, and she crashed through it before being yanked back down, slamming into the floor. Then Vermilion pulled her towards him and struck her in the face, shattering her aura and sending her crashing into the wall, unconscious. We're done here, let's go, Vermilion declared, walking over to the unconscious Yang and throwing her over his shoulder. Naruto's eyes widened in shock as he emerged from the flames, covered in burns that were slowly healing. He saw Vermilion carrying Yang and shouted, let her go. But before he could react, Vermilion teleported in front of him, delivering a powerful punch that sent Naruto crashing into a wall. You want her back? Then come to this location, Vermilion said, tossing a scroll at Naruto before teleporting away with Abigail and his remaining men. Naruto could only watch in shock and horror as Vermilion opened a portal with his flail and disappeared with Yang. He shouted in frustration, feeling powerless to save her. Standing up, Naruto picked up the scroll Vermilion had thrown at him, scowling as he looked at the location where they had taken Yang. He grabbed Yamado and opened a portal to return to Patch, determined to rescue Yang and take down Vermilion and his allies. Later, Xiao Long slash Rose Cabin. Upon arriving back at the cabin, Naruto explained what had happened, shocking everyone with the news of the attack and Yang's kidnapping. Crow spoke up, expressing concern that it might be a trap. You realize this is a trap, right? Crow stated, eyeing his nephew, who had changed into a new set of clothes to replace his destroyed ones. Naruto now wore a long, silver-buttoned blue coat with three separated coattails. A white, serpentine pattern ran around the collar, with a snake's head hanging over the coat's left shoulder and its tail slinking down the right, all the way to the bottom of the coat. A gold lining ran across the edges of the coat, and a silky, golden flower blossom pattern decorated the inner lining. Each cuff of the coat also possessed five gold button straps with gold lining. The coat also featured identical straps on each shoulder, decorated with silver buttons instead of gold. Underneath the coat, he was wearing a navy blue ascot wrapped around his neck, which hung over a black, sleeveless vest that revealed his well-toned arms and shoulders. He wore tan, fingerless gloves, a brown, snakeskin belt with a silver buckle, dark green pants with a scale pattern running across its surface, and tall, brown boots with two golden buckled straps at the top. Of course it's a trap. The leader obviously has a semblance that lets him copy other people's semblances since he could teleport and open portals after touching me. As well as having seen how I fight, he's preparing for when I arrive. And I'm gladly going to kill anyone that gets between me and him, cut off his head, then save Yang, said Naruto, fully aware he's going into a trap and will welcome whatever Vermilion has in store, knowing it won't be enough to stop him from killing the man. After that it'll be best if Emerald and I take our leave, since if Salem's now making a move against us, we need to leave now, Naruto added, with Emerald nodding in agreement, knowing they couldn't stay here any longer without bringing more danger. This disheartened Ruby, Taeyong, and Crow, but they also understood their reasoning. Ivan Nago, I want to help save Yang and bring her back, said Ruby, worried and fearful of what could happen to her sister. Absolutely not. You aren't going anywhere, Ruby. This is beyond just simple grim or even regular criminals. These people work for Salem. That means they have no reservations about simply killing anyone that gets in their way. Especially you, with your eyes. Taeyong immediately said, refusing to have both his daughters in danger. And while he is worried about Naruto, he knew that he's capable of handling himself in these situations. Tai's right, kid. This is way out of your league, though I understand where you're coming from, wanting to save your sister. But we can't save her if we also have to look after you. Though I'll be going as well, Crow said, looking at Naruto and Emerald, not planning to sit back while his niece is being held captive. I don't care. I already lost my mom because of Salem. I'm not losing young too, Ruby said, not wanting to lose someone else she cares about because of Salem and her followers. Yeah, and she was older, stronger, far more experienced, as well as having mastered her silver eyes, but she was still beaten by Salem. Also, do you really think she or Yang would want you putting yourself in danger because of them? Said Naruto, only for Ruby to glare at him. What would you know? You never met my mom, and you've barely spent time with Yang. And when you do, she's kidnapped and I'll probably lose her too, because of you. Retorted Ruby before speeding out of the cabin, while Naruto frowned at her words, with the others being shocked at what she said. Don't, don't take what she said seriously. Ruby didn't mean it, and she doesn't actually blame you. This is just a trying time for all of us right now, Taeyong said to Naruto, knowing Ruby's just scared and angry, 
which caused her to lash out, with the whiskered teen shaking his head. It's fine. What matters is just getting young back now, Naruto said, with the others nodding in agreement. Then let's go kick some ass, said Emerald as she, Naruto, and Crow began preparing to head out to the location where Yang is being kept. None of them noticed how they were being watched by a particularly attentive raven before it flew off. Unknown location. Meanwhile, Yang had started coming to from being knocked out by Vermilion, only to find herself strapped to a metal table, unable to break her restraints or even use her aura or her semblance, making her worry about where she was and what was happening. I wouldn't bother trying to escape. Those restraints have been made to suppress a person's aura and semblance, as well as being strong enough to restrain those much stronger than you, said a voice, getting Yang's attention. She looked up to see a holographic image of Merlot, with her eyes widening at the sight of his limbs and eyes. Who, or what, the hell are you? Yang demanded, glaring at Merlot. I am Dr. Merlot, founder of the now-defunct Merlot Industries within Mountain Glen, and you are my newest test subject, one who should be thankful as I've only ever performed this experiment on one other person. One you know quite well, Merlot said, with it taking a few moments before Yang's eyes widened then glared at the scientist. Naruto, what the hell did you do to my brother? Yang demanded, glaring at Merlot. I gave that brat power beyond anything anyone could ever hope to achieve. And how does he repay me? Crippling me, destroying my lab, killing all of my grim, and taking my sword, shouted Merlot scowling before smirking at Yang. But I did get my own personal revenge when I had that girl he was with killed. Even if it happened before I started my experiments, it still feels good, knowing I could cause him such pain, Merlot revealed, making Yang's eyes widened. You? You're the one who killed his girlfriend? Yang said, now hating this guy even more for not only experimenting on her twin, but also being the one who killed his girlfriend. Yes, I was. Though, truthfully, she was merely a casualty as I only intended to capture the boy. Her being there was unforeseen, but a pleasing development for the pain it caused him, stated Merlot, while Yang simply glared at him. Why did you even go after Naruto? What did you do to him? Yang demanded, wanting to know why Naruto was chosen of all people for this lunatic's experiments. Simple, I required a powerful specimen, one that had the strength and will to survive my experiments, and I couldn't have found a more perfect one. He possessed the strength, the will, the killer instinct, and the drive to be the best. Even before those experiments I could see that he desired greater power, greater strength, and I was merely obliged to give it to him. As for what I did, I made him into the perfect hybrid between human and grim, Merlot said with a mad grin at revealing what he'd done. You what? said Yang as her eyes widened at what he just said. He became my crowning achievement, possessing the unbridled, raw aggression and power of the grim as well as the strive to succeed and evolve from humanity. His potential was limitless, and so his power would be limitless. I would have brought this world to its knees with him under my control, but he proved too difficult to control. Lucky for me, he has a twin sister with the same DNA and strength within, said Merlot, looking at Yang, who was shocked, horrified, and angered at what he did to her brother, and that he's now going to do the same to her, though she tried covering it with a taunting smirk. Wow. You aren't just crazy, you're delusional. If you couldn't control Naruto, then sorry to tell you. But there's no way you can control me. The only thing you'll do is make two unstoppable threats that'll want your head, Yang taunted. Even though she may not like it, she wanted this guy dead after what he's done and will gladly beat him within an inch of his life before letting Naruto finish him. Ah, you're under the impression I'll be making the same mistake twice. I was arrogant and overly assured of my ability to control Naruto. I've learned from my mistakes and won't let them be repeated, Merlot stated before a needle was jammed into Yang's neck, injecting her with a powerful sedative and knocking her out again, allowing the procedure to begin. Patch. Back on Patch, Naruto, Emerald, and Crow had finished preparing and headed out. None of them noticing Ruby had snuck out and waited for them to leave. The Ravenette refused to be stopped from going to save her sister, while planning to follow them to where Yang was taken. Though before Ruby could try following after them, she was suddenly grabbed from behind and then thrown backwards. The silver-eyed girl only had a second to see she'd been pulled through what looked like a swirling mass of red and black energy that soon closed, finding herself somewhere completely different. What you were about to do wouldn't only have been suicide, it only would have succeeded in putting you and your family in danger, said someone, making Ruby tense before her eyes widened when she looked at who'd grabbed her, only to see Raven looking at her coldly. Raven, Ruby said, 
quickly standing up and guessing who it was, given she looked like an older version of Yang, but with black hair and red eyes. You're smart enough to know me, but apparently not smart enough to know how foolish and stupid you are for trying to follow them, Raven stated coldly and bluntly, with Ruby merely scowling at her. And why would you care what I do? You never cared before about Yang, Dad, or my mom. Or are you only caring because Naruto's involved? Ruby said, not about to let her tell her what to do when she's never bothered showing up before or caring, with Raven giving her a warning look. You should really be careful who you're speaking to, while you're simply proving my point that you're acting childishly and recklessly. You think you can rush in to save Yang when all you'd be doing is getting yourself killed, said Raven, only to see her stepdaughter refuse to back down. I don't care. At least I would be trying to save her, retorted Ruby, making the woman mentally sigh in annoyance before grabbing Omen's hilt. Seeing she couldn't get through to Ruby with words, she'll see if actions will work. Without warning, Raven pulled out a fire dust blade and swung it at Ruby, releasing a wave of fire at the silver-eyed girl. Ruby's eyes widened at the sudden attack before she sped out of the way of the flames and pulled out Crescent Rose, switching it to its gun form and shooting at Raven. The woman blocked all the shots with her sword before the dust blade broke, and she replaced it with a gravity dust blade. Rushing her stepdaughter, Raven swung her sword at Ruby, who quickly switched Crescent Rose to its sword form and blocked the strike, only to find herself being pushed back as Raven continued her assault, before using her scabbard to smack the younger Ravenette's sword aside. Ruby gasped in pain when Raven thrust her sword at her, unleashing a blast of gravity that knocked her into a tree. Sheathing her sword before switching to an ice dust blade, Raven pulled the trigger on her scabbard, launching her blade out. She rushed and grabbed it, making Ruby's eyes widen as she rolled out of the way, just as Raven sliced right through the tree and knocked it down, encasing it in ice. Switching back to her gun mode, Ruby began speeding around Raven and firing at her, only for the woman to switch blades again, this time to a hard light dust blade, which she stabbed into the ground to form a shield around her. Then she swung her sword through the air, creating hard light copies that she fired through the shield around her. The sudden blades forced Ruby to duck down to avoid getting hit only to suddenly be blown away as Raven dropped the shield and changed to a wind dust blade, swinging it at Ruby while releasing blasts of wind at her. Gritting her teeth, Ruby changed Crescent Rose to its scythe form and stabbed the blade into the ground to keep herself in place. She managed to grab the lever and fire off a few shots at Raven, forcing her to block them as her blade broke from the impacts. Acting fast, Ruby pulled Crescent Rose out of the ground before, to Raven's surprise, she actually threw the scythe at the woman. Switching to an ice dust blade, Raven stabbed her sword into the ground, forming a wall of ice that Crescent Rose stabbed into. This gave Ruby the chance to quickly speed around the ice and straight towards Raven, managing to kick the woman in the face while grabbing Crescent Rose and pulling it out of the ice. Then she went back to its gun form and fired at Raven, getting another shot at her with her aura flaring around her. Though Raven was quick to recover and switched to a lightning dust blade, swinging it at Ruby and releasing a blast of lightning at the girl. Ruby quickly sped out of the way, only for her eyes to widen when she suddenly found her legs encased in ice, while Raven now held her sword at her neck. If I were taking you seriously, or if I wanted you dead, you wouldn't have even had time to draw your weapon. Salem and her allies won't have the same restrictions. Some of them may even toy with you just to watch you helplessly struggle before killing you. They won't care about what you say, what you do, what you want, nothing. The only thing they'll care about is bringing your head to Salem, and that's if you're lucky. Raven stated, looking at Ruby with narrowed eyes before switching to a fire dust blade and stabbing it in the ice, melting it and freeing Ruby. The girl simply fell on her, but as she finally began to understand what Raven and her family were trying to tell her, I, I know it's dangerous, and that I could really be killed, but I'm just, I'm just angry. I'm angry, sad, scared, and confused, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do, Ruby said while grabbing her head, feeling overwhelmed and lost. Yeah, I understand the feeling, more than you could know, said Raven, looking at Ruby and hesitating before putting a hand on her shoulder, surprising the silver-eyed girl. And despite how the match turned out, you actually managed to impress me a few times, and I can see that you have a lot of potential. Just like your mother, Raven said, seeing potential in the daughter of the late woman she loved, surprising Ruby again at being compared to her mother. I still wish I could do something, said Ruby, not wanting to just do nothing with Raven nodding in understanding. I'm sure you do, but for now, just let those with more experience handle it. And, if you want, I can take over your training to use a sword while Naruto and Crow are away, 
offered Raven, much to Ruby's shock at the offer. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd actually be really great, Ruby replied, accepting the offer, wanting to get the chance to grow stronger and better protect her family, along with swearing to apologize to Naruto as well. Feeling bad about what she said to her half-brother and swore to apologize when he, Emerald, and Crow got back. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.